on a rainy day in the UK. You won't see me for, I'm going tomorrow for an operation on my knee, getting a knee replacement, so uh, hopefully all good. Right, a lot of people don't seem to understand our issues using changing the inverter, especially a 3.6 kilowatt inverter from a class two to a class one. To change it, we need to put an earth bond relay. Okay, right, on the 3.6, it's slightly different to the five. So on the 3.6 is, it doesn't have an output, it has dry contacts. So if I use my meter here, I use my multimeter, but let's just check the dry contacts operate. So I put a bleeper on here, and you can see, you hear the bleeper, okay. So five and six, so on here, if you should zoom the thing in here, you'll see terminals five and six. Five and six are a dry contact. So if I put on my meter here, and I put on my meter here, right, you can hear, the relay is closed. So let me put the, push the probes in a bit. Do me a favor, turn off the mains. Just turn the mains off there. So, no, yeah, is that, is that the power? Yeah, uh, is that the AC or DC? Is, is, that's DC, that's, uh, is that the AC line, yeah? Yes, yeah, okay, turn the AC off. We're off, AC is off. So the relay's dropped out. Unit's still outputting as a normal, so it's still working the inverter, but that relay has dropped out. Turn it back on again. So it's back on again, and it takes roughly about a minute. We'll fast forward the video to show you, but roughly a minute, and the relay will close. That means that re that operating relay in the unit is closed when there's power, and open when there's not power. So it's very simple. So we have to create an earth bond. For that to be for that to operate, that means when there is power the relay is closed. When there is no power, the relay is open. So one thing that we can't use, I'll pick that up. This is, got, this is just a normally open. We need the opposite way around. So this relay can't be used because the problem with this relay is when, there is, when the thing is energized, it will close and it will make the bond backwards. So if we use this relay, it's backwards, so we have to use we have to using this sort of standard contactor type relay. So we just sent out for one, and we'll get it, and we'll wire it in, and we'll show how it works. Let me pre-wire it. I've down powered it. Batteries off, solar off, AC off. As is the three inverters on here, which is the demonstration site. So let me connect here. So number six connected, and then. So this is purely for demonstration, uh, and I've just used one of these three, these inverters. So I've connected. This is this is my supply. Um, one of the things I need to consider is um, there should really be a little inline fuse on here for protection, because I'm going to use the relay is going to be external. But then there should be some some sort of protection, because otherwise I'm taking straight off a higher current onto a smaller cable, uh, which is not good practice. So there should be a small inline fuse. Um, you can get these little inline fuses or whatever, but however it's done, there should, be, there should be some protection on it. So at the moment here, which is, I've got on here, I've got my load, which is here now. Because uh, normally the load would actually have the UPS socket connected to it, I haven't got it connected at the moment. Um, but I need, I need a negative power, so I need a negative. In fact, what I'll do is a, if, probably better to, for the sake of clarity, rather than I'll change the colour of that cable to a, to a blue. So, to make it easier for everyone to see, so I'm actually choosing to switch on the negative. I'll put it into the connector. Okay, give it a little bit of tug to make sure it's connected properly. And then I need to make two negative connections onto the grid. One is going to be for my earth bond, and one is my supply for here. So what I'll do is I'll just cut this cable from here. Now, obviously, the cable for the earth bond will be a much thicker cable. Um, because obviously it's going to conduct higher currents. So, so two, two wires here into the negative terminal. And this would be, uh, I'm using the load terminal, which is the center one here. So it screw straight back. In fact, there'll be the, there'll be the socket connected in here as well. So negative here. Okay. 
So my negative there, negative supply. So this is for my this this is the negative for the bond. Um, I'm going to have an earth connection. So this is my earth bond wire, uh, which I can then put onto the earth bond. Now, of course, we, as we said before, you probably you would need to use an earth rod as well uh, to fully comply. Um, and I should actually put a lug on this, but again, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes only. And on the backboard here, so there's my bond cables. There's my um, relay neutral. And so the only thing I need then is a relay positive. Uh, live, I should say, it's not positive, it's not DC, it's an AC, so put a rat live. And again, uh, I mentioned there should be, I would use a live with some sort of a little inline fuse. You can get these little inline fuses and I'll connect it into the load connection here. Um, and the load connection is the UPS connection. Um, and I said, I'm just doing this purely for demonstration purposes only. So I'll connect it in here. And it's going to be interesting because if I'm going to trip, <laughs> yeah, it, be, it should be fine. Right. Okay, so here, these two here are the uh, the relay coil, live and neutral. I have a neutral for the relay coil. And I said I would probably have to put a little fuse or something in it to be fully compliant. And it should be in an external box. What I'll do is for just for demonstration purposes only, I'll put it through here. So you can see these wires. Okay, so there's my live and neutral. That's that's the relay coil. And these two are the bond. So one is my earth, one is my neutral. So I'm gonna do earth neutral bond. So I've got four connections. Uh, earth neutral bond connection here. Um, now, there is something that I mentioned earlier on. Um, you need to make sure you switch the uh, it on and I can demonstrate that in a second. Make sure that you've got the signal. I've actually put the signal on here. Okay, so now we just wait for the, um, we've now prepped as soon as they bring the relay, then we can demonstrate an earth neutral bond relay. Um, and again, you would, you would actually, um, these have been much heavier cables um, because, you know, if it's on a 3.6, then these need to be about two and a half mil, uh, at least you want about two and a half mil cable. These are fine as signal cables, but you should put on the live wire, some sort of protection or a fuse or something in line and then you're fully compliant. And then the unit, the relay, should be in a separate box at the side, um, rather than shoved in floating. It's not very good practice to do that. We got a relay, um, it's a big one, because it's all you can get at the moment, but uh, you get them from RS components and stuff. So, this one is the opposite way around. So if I meter it, I should see a connection here. Buzzer on, you can hear the buzzer. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, A1 and A2 is the coil. So, uh, without further ado, um, we said here these two live neutral here for the coil. So, of course, we're just going to mount this outside externally. Uh, this is a three phase contact, of course, we don't need a three phase. Um, whether people bend the wire over or not bend the wire over, I'll put the live into A1. I shall put the, the neutral into, this is the relay feed. So you can see it's going through the coil, it's going through the, the, the inverter. And then the other two, um, we can, uh, what I often say is, you know, you've you got a three phase, you got a three phase contactor. You could, you could, if you wanted to, use one of the other contactors for um, operator light, if you want to show an LED or a little bulb when it operates, if you want to do that, it's always thought to everything's working. But when, when the read, because it, you, right, I'll close it in here. Now, of course, these two cables here should be much thicker. That's at 2.5. Uh, this actually is a, is it a 40 amp relay yep. contactor? Yes, it's massive. And then uh, finally, put the last wire in here. So, there we go. 
leave it dangling for demonstration purposes. <laughs> okay. All right. Now. Okay. So let's boot up the system. We've got three inverters in parallel. Uh, notice how it's wired. Uh, DC isolators here. First one, first one, and the other middle is looped. So everything is equal size. So without further ado, um, batteries are actually booted up. So if we power up the inverters, always battery first, switch, switch on the inverters, always right practice, run battery first. Uh, thing is booting up, got an alarm condition because the way we boot it down. One of the things is we're going to make sure that we give the grid signal. So go on to settings um, and to battery charge here. So settings, battery charge, islanding signal mode here. Okay, so we've got it there. One thing I always do, good practice, if I've done a setting and make sure, you always press enter, I always go back and a simple thing is go back and check it's, it is there. The reason I do that is because sometimes when you press the OK button, if your finger like mine is a bit big and, and you press the OK and it doesn't do it. So you can see here it's, it's OK so I can escape. So settings there. Uh, we're on now. We're, we're, we're all on the battery. So what we need to do now is wait for the normal light. We can't suddenly go and boot up the, the unit because obviously this is now an off on grid system. So it requires a battery, as we said before. So um, we need to wait now for the normal light. So at the moment, there's nothing to lit up. Um, the DC is your solar, AC is your AC coming in. Normal waiting for obviously alarm is alarm. And that, was, that came on before. The moment we've got our isolators are off for our solar and our AC is off. We'll just check, have we got, we shouldn't have anything. Uh, we should have something, yeah? 240. 240, yeah. So, so the contact is closed. Okay, so the contact is now open. Yeah. It's the opposite way around. So we've got an open circuit. So uh, if you if you switch off the AC, mm -hmm. so just switch off the AC. Clicked on. It clicked, right, it clicked. So we've still got a normal, so we've still got a normal light, as you say. Now, if you put the AC back on again, and what happens is, is the relay clicks a fraction before the inverter cuts in. So make sure you've got the right version of software. Um, we, we've mentioned this before to ensure you've got the latest version of software on the unit. Uh, because if you haven't, there's a de the delay. If you haven't got the latest version, what happens is it operates at the same time, whereas the, the newer version has got a, a, a quarter second or half second delay, and so it just allows it. But that looks like it's working okay. So we're just talking about on this particular installation. So the problem may be just the relay. So the possible, yeah, the it's problem is the relay, and then uh, just defining what the actual wiring was. So you've got a, you've got two types of relay. So on a on a five, it's the opposite way around. So you've got two. So one's normally open, one's normally closed, and, and it, that's important to notice. It's got different pins as well, isn't it? Yeah, two yeah, pins, yeah. So so, but always check it with your meter first before you do it. Yeah. So check to make sure the meter is. You, you can know what way it round, and it's not rocket science to work out the type of relay you should be using. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just a case of feeling comfortable with it all. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Take a link out from the other side. Switch your lab on the other side. Switch your lab on the top. So obviously, uh, one of the things I mentioned is make sure you put a fuse, something in, in the live, because obviously you need some protection if you've got a problem, and the relay needs to be put into yeah. a separate mounting box or something. We know we've put a little board in there, we don't we know if we've board in with mm -hmm. Yeah, so it should be fairly simple. Yeah. Um, okay. All right? Yeah.